Hello dear learners, welcome in this video of urea cycle as a part of amino acid metabolism part 2. So we will see in detail the urea cycle. So as you see this is the structure of urea. I hope you will enjoy this session. So we will start with the step of urea cycle. Now urea, so what is urea? So urea is also known as carbamide. So carbamide is an organic compound with a chemical formula CONH2 twice. This is the structure of urea as we have seen in the first slide CNH2 CONH2. So the urea cycle, the other name of urea cycle is ornithine cycle that we will see in these steps. Many in occurring reaction, the biochemical cycle is a urea produced that animals from ammonia is a NH3. Now the functions of urea cycle. So what are the functions? So organism that cannot easily and quickly remove ammonia usually have to convert it to some other substance like we can say urea or uric acid which are much less toxic. So insufficiency of urea cycle occurs in some genetic disorder like a liver failure. Now we will see the urea cycle. So so this is a urea cycle these are the steps of urea cycle so first step of urea cycle is synthesis of carbamoyl phosphate the second step is a formation of citrulline the third step is synthesis of arginosuccinate the fourth step is cleavage of arginosuccinate and the fifth step is a formation of urea so ultimately we will get urea now see this is our structure as well as the cycle see don't see over here we will see every step in detail just see which process is occurring in mitochondria and which process is occurring in cytosol so see in this urea cycle so just see over here as in the previous lecture i said whatever ammonia is there okay we are using in urea cycle okay it will come from from where it came it came from the deamination reaction so here the ammonia will combine with carbon dioxide and it will form the carbamoyl phosphate okay so here the enzyme we require it's ornithine trans carbamylase okay and it will form the second step is a synthesis of citrulline okay then the third step fourth and fifth step so the first two step we can say the formation of carbamyl phosphate and citrulline it will occur in a mitochondria okay it will occur in a mitochondria but the other steps the next three steps will occur in the cytosol now we will see each step turn by turn in much detail here the ammonia will react with the carbon dioxide with the 2 ATP and it will form the product it's a carbamoyl phosphate from 2 ATP it will form 2 ADP okay and other two from other two phosphate one phosphate is liberated and other phosphate is come over here and it will make a structure of a carbamoyl phosphatase now we will see the second step it's a formation of citrulline so when there is a formation of citrulline we will see this is our first step it's a formation of carbamyl phosphate now this carbamyl phosphate okay react with a ornithine See this carbamyl phosphate react with ornithine and it will form citrulline. Okay, so it is just see over here, it's a formation of citrulline. Okay, what happened over here? Just nothing, just there is a this two structure will join like this. Okay, and it will form this structure of citrulline. Now the third step. And one phosphate is removed. See over here, there is a formation of citrulline. Now the third step is a synthesis of arginosuccinate. So when there is a any synthesis, okay, there is an enzyme. It's known as synthase. So to generate arginosuccinate, the enzyme used, okay, it's arginosuccinate synthase. So from citrulline, okay, it will react with aspartate. See, this is a structure of aspartate. Sure, what happened? Your amino 
your ATP it's convert to the AMP ATP means adenosine triphosphate will convert to adenosine monophosphate and PPI means diphosphate will remove so here you are getting the structure of arginosuccinate so when citrulline is react with aspartate it will form one structure it's a arginosuccinate and whatever enzyme we are using to synthesize arginosuccinate is a arginosuccinate synthase so in this reaction what happened just from this this carbonyl group this group is removed and in place of that there is a joining of the structure okay the structure will attach over here of aspartate so citrulline will react with aspartate and it will form arginosuccinate now the next step is a cleavage of arginosuccinate so when there is a cleavage of arginosuccinate it will give the structure of arginine so this is our arginosuccinate now there is a cleavage so it will form a fumarate okay means what this structure will remove and it is known as fumarate and whatever structure we are getting it's a arginine so what is cleavage of arginosuccinate the arginosuccinate okay, will remove fumarate from the structure and we are getting arginine means cleavage of arginosuccinate is, we can say it is also known as the formation of arginine now there is a formation of urea now see over here why the urea cycle is also known as ornithine cycle so from arginine there is a formation of urea okay from arginine there is a formation of nh2 co nh2 it's a urea at that time it will remove okay or it will remove ornithine as well as a urea product it will make two products okay urea is a liberation product and ornithine as a main product and this ornithine will again utilize in a urea cycle okay it will again utilize reaction with a carbamoyl phosphate and it will form citrulline right so this is a formation of urea so just see from here okay there is a removal of urea and other structure this is known as ornithine so this is all about urea cycle there are just a five step of cycle it's very easy to remember it's very important so now we will see the defects of amino acid now we will see the defects of urea cycle okay metabolic defects so these are the defects named hyperammonemia okay citrullinia the arginosuccinic aciduria and hyperarginemia so how and when there will occur there is a chance of this defect so obviously whenever we have a deficiency of that particular enzyme okay this kind of effect we will get first is hyperammonemia type 1 means there is an increased ammonia level in our blood okay why it is happened because see what is our first step okay we have to form carbamyl phosphate okay with the help of carbamyl phosphate synthesis so when there will be no enzyme what happened there will be no reaction so if there will be no reaction the ammonia will not convert it into carbamyl phosphate okay so there will be no process so obviously the increased level of ammonia we can find in our body next is a hyperammonia ammonemia type 2 it's a ornithine trans carbamylase okay this is the defect of because of this enzyme it will occur then citrullinemia okay citrullinemia it's occur because of the enzyme arginosuccinate synthase okay because we are using arginosuccinate synthase enzyme to synthesize arginosuccinate from citrulline okay so when there is a no enzyme it's arginosuccinate synthase what happened there is always obviously increase the reactant means our citrulline that's why it's known as citrullinemia then arginosuccinase okay it's form arginosuccinate aciduria okay means arginosuccinic acid will increase in our body then arginase okay it's a hyperarginemia means our blood in our blood arginine will increase okay the amount of arginine will increase it's known as hyperarginemia so this all it's the defect and now in the next video we will see the other metabolism like a metabolism of phenylalanine and tyrosine as amino acid metabolism thank you dear learners for watching the video keep learning